In the previous section to the course, we were discussing local network metrics that refer to a single node in a graph, asking how connected it was, or how influential and central it was, whilst also building up our basic vocabulary. In the coming set of lectures, we're going to be looking at global metrics that refer to the whole graph. As we've previously noted, networks are a very informal type of structure. They often simply develop without any overall top-down design. Someone builds a protocol for two computers to exchange information over a network and shares it with a colleague. Other people see the utility of it and connect to this little network and then more people as the network grows. Until 25 years later, we have a massive network of networks that is the internet. No one planned the internet, just as no one really planned the global financial networks that have emerged over the past few decades. Traders, investors and institutions set up connections wherever they thought there was a viable return on investment. But now that these networks are here, their overall makeup feeds back to affect us, the users. Networks may start out quite random, but they often develop into some stable overall structure, and understanding the patterns to this overall structure is of central importance within network theory, and will be the focus of this section to the course. We can call this overall structure to a network its topology, where topology simply means the way in which constituent parts are interrelated or arranged. Within the context of a network, it defines the way different nodes are placed and interconnected with each other, and the overall patterns that emerge out of this. To illustrate this further, here are a set of simple networks, each containing the same amount of nodes, but each having a different overall topology. Owing to the way that it is connected, we can see how these different network topologies would in turn have very different features and properties to them. Imagine there were different transportation systems in which you are trying to get from A to B. In the star topology, it would only ever take you two hops to reach your destination, but in the ring, it might take three, the tree structure possibly four. This same influence from the topology affecting how anything in the network has to operate would apply if we were trying to route water through a hydraulic network or electricity on a power grid. This network could also represent the flow of information within a national society. We can see how the centralized star structure, or the tree structure, would be much easier for some political regime to control and influence, as opposed to the more decentralized, fully connected, or ring network. The point I'm trying to make clear is simply that networks have overall structure, and this overall topology to the network matters, as it feeds back to affect the actions and capabilities of the nodes on the local level. So to start digging into the analysis of some of the most important macro features to a network, we might begin with connectivity as primary. With connectivity, we're really talking about the density of the connections within the system. As we'll be discussing shortly, the degree of connectivity will largely be a product of how easy or difficult it is for any two nodes to form a connection. As we reduce the barriers to interaction, we will see the network become more dense, integrated, and increasingly defined by the structure and makeup of the network. Another macro scale property to the system we'll be interested in modeling and quantifying is its size. By size, we simply mean the number of nodes. This may sound like a trivial factor, but scale can matter, as sometimes more is not just more, it is in fact different. Think about living in a small rural community where everyone knows everyone by just one or two degrees of separation versus living in a large metropolis where the anonymity of much longer path lengths between people creates a new type of social dynamic. Lastly, in this section, we'll be talking about a network's overall pattern of connectedness. The way in which a network is connected plays a large part in how networks are analyzed and interpreted. Due to some common set of properties shared by a subset of the system, we often get subsystems forming in the network. These subsystems are also called clusters and often have a significant effect on the network's makeup. For example, we might think here about the clustering in the different cultural groups around the world. Although two cultures like that of France and Italy are different, they share a common Greco-Roman heritage that gives them and other European countries a set of common features through which they form a cultural cluster within the global network of cultures. We'll wrap up here then by saying that networks 
are not always, but often created by the nodes in the network, who create or don't create connections in response to local level conditions. But once a network has reached a level of maturity, a global structure will have emerged to it that feeds back to affect the elements in the system. Once this is the case, we then need to analyze this global structure to the network, what we call its topology, in order to understand it. In the coming three lectures in this course, we're going to be looking at some of the primary features that shape this macro-scale topology to the network 